Well, we're back for another Tech Talk with Paul and Al, and we're here. He's got a fascinating Zenith. Is it antique, or what would you call it? Uh, it's vintage. Vintage. Yeah. It looks real vintage to me. This is an interesting piece. Let me see if I can form a, a clothespin here to hold this washer in place so I can tip it over. This is a post-war Zenith AM radio record player, which ordinarily wouldn't mean much. With Zenith, it was something very special. Come on, go back in there. It, it lost a lot of its uh, Eclipse. Come on. That's a toughie there. It is a toughie. It can be done. Come on, compress. There we are. Well, one more try, then I'll give up. Are those clips hard to find now? They are. I've been looking and couldn't find one. Uh, you just need a C clip. I just want to be able to turn it over without the chains are falling out. Can you press on that from the other side? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Got it. You got it. I've done this before. Paper clips will solve a lot of problems. Okay, now the changer is secured. This is an odd changer. It has a chain which runs around the spent the uh, bottom of the turntable and two gears it makes a circuit to change the records I've got this out to be cleaned had to pull this and and unseize it and grease it and some other things so that it's now semi-functional but it won't change records it's like it's been outside for a while or no it was this is what it looks like after over 50 years 60 years black Let's start with this. With the same latch that they put on the Zenith Transoceanic radios in those days, it locks, has a little lock pin. And there is a single speed Zenith changer. They made this changer. That's 12 gauge steel, weighs a ton. Plays 10 or 12 inch 78s with the Cobra tone arm. They uses the Cobra radionic cartridge, which would have been new this year. Prior model had a tubular tone arm with a black head shell about the size of a domino with a crystal mm. cartridge in it. This was the upgrade with the Cobra. And you notice this little pin box? That's where they put the Cobra adapter unit. This is the cover that goes on from the bottom. And that is the Cobra cartridge adapter. It's a, a combination oscillator demodulator that takes the FM frequency off the cartridge, turns it into audio. So they use this to upgrade existing systems for a number of years. Very strange. Hmm. This goes in from the bottom. There's where they hit it. Later years, this was built into the radio chassis, but this was an add-on. So there's the turntable with Cobra arm. And let's get to the chassis on it. It is kind of severe looking. It's sort of a, a fake black leather. The radios have the same covering. But what's neat about this one is the radio chassis. It's a six tube radio, two tube radio, rectifier, push pull audio. And that's a double triode, which you don't often see in a radio for the audio. <coughs> AM only, good size speaker, good size transformer, very uh, striking front, heavy handle, radio dial with the uh, gear down fine tuning, mm -hmm. and radio and phono with high and low tone settings. This all go, slides in from the front to form the finished unit. So, it's a snug fit. So, 
Looks was, like it overheated a little bit here. Uh, two 25L6 tubes. Yeah, they've got 600 mil filaments. They get hot. Is so, that a pilot lighter? No, this was to change the record. It's a switch. Hmm. The record changer uses a solenoid to trip. There's a winding on the motor to power the solenoid to change the records. And this was a remote, a remote, an external reject button, which would change the records without raising the lid. This didn't have a reject switch as such. Zenith was kind of weird about that. It's got a manual, uh, manual or man, automatic or manual setting and off to turn off the motor. But you changed records right there in the front. When this was new and it was shiny and black and brass, very handsome and very heavy and probably very expensive. I mean, this would have been top of the line in 47, 47 and 48. Come on, cords, get over the humps while we put this back in here. You have to go down through there. I saw this on eBay and I thought I shouldn't bid on that, but it's not, nobody else is, and sure enough, nobody else did. There we go. So that was a hunky, serious radio record player for in its day. I mean, right after World War II, this would have been the Cadillac of phonographs. Thought it was interesting. Record changer can be fixed. Uh, the radio needs to be recapped. It does that sort of kind of work. It'll be done soon. Okay, Paul, there was, uh, we were talking about some of the uh, you viewers on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, wanted um, to know how to get a hold of you if you wanted to fix something, if they wanted something fixed. Well, the easiest thing is just to email me uh, at prussellporter at gmail.com. That's P R U S S E L L. Yeah, two S's, two L's, my name, at gmail.com. Okay. Well, if you want something fixed, you might give him an email and he'll tell yeah, you how to we'll send talk, it. Yeah, we'll talk about it. Right now, I'm kind of swamped with toys and, and some other projects, but uh, one of these days I'll retire and I'll need more work. So, yeah, uh, you got questions or something you want done, give me a, an email. We'll talk about it. Okay, Paul. Well, thank you. You're welcome.